Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner, wearing black with the colors of Mexico, green, white, and red. On the scale, he registered an official 114 pounds. And tonight, he enters the ring in his 30th professional bout with 17 victories against nine losses, three draws, eight of those victories coming by way of KO. Hailing from Rosarito, Mexico, and now fighting out of Modesto, California, Gilberto Mendoza. Across the ring in the red corner, wearing gold with purple, he weighed in at an identical 114 pounds. He steps in with an outstanding record consisting of 21 victories, only two losses, all 21 victories coming by way of KO. The former WBO Junior Flyweight Champion of the World from El Barrio Obrero, Santurce, Puerto Rico, Ángel Tito Acosta. Buenas noches, jóvenes. Quiero una pelea limpia. Protéjanse todo el tiempo. Obedezcan mi mandato. No quiero golpes debajo de esta línea. ¿okay? Buena suerte y que ganen mejor. Vamos. Gracias. Robert. Ángel Acosta. 111 rounds as a pro. Mendoza with 130 rounds as a pro. Mendoza 0-1 when fighting in Puerto Rico. And Acosta undefeated on the island. 11-0 with 11 knockouts. Sean, I like a little flair to my game. You <laughs> down with uh, Angel Acosta's shoes at this point? I'm down with the shoes. I'm down with the purple and gold. I like both these guys. I think I thought that they both came to the ring different, and they, I think they both got a look to them. I mean, look at Mendoza's hair. He's got some fantastic hair. And with these guys being smaller, you know, we should see more more action than we have in the more than the past two fights. Okay, tight. Mm. He, he said, hold on, something's not right. Yeah, <laughs> mouthpiece. Okay. Yeah, this was the case of the, of the mouthpiece coming out. It just never went in. He said, hold on, something's not right. Acosta channeling his inner LSU Tigers. Good party shot. Acosta very sharp early. Mm -hmm. Mendoza last fought in November. Lost a six round decision to Sergio Jimenez. Costa's last fight, October of 2019. Ooh. And this is a new division for Acosta at 115 pounds, and he's world class, a former WBO champion at junior flyweight. We, of course, we talked about earlier his controversial title loss in 2019 to Elwin Soto. He got up off the canvas early. He was rocked in round 12. Fight waved off without a count. Ooh. That's still very sore in his mind. He wanted a chance to try to beat that count and win that fight. So now he's moved up in weight. As Bob mentioned, he bounced back with a nice knockout in 2019 of Raymond Tabugan. And now he's going to try his hand at 115 pounds, see if he can stay at that world elite level. Tito Angel Acosta, he looks like a strong fighter right now. I, think, I know it's the first round, filling out round, but he, he looks like he's strong with both hands. He's throwing a good, strong jab. Watch his jab. He's got a, he's got a little thump with his jab. And then the overhand right. And Sean, there's great divisions in this sport. Welterweight, we know, is the money division. Heavyweight's the classic one. But how about 115 pounds right now? And we're, what, a week removed from Chocolatito, Roman Gonzalez, and that rematch yeah, with man. Juan Francisco Estrada. 
I think boxing is boxing's had some very good nights recently, and it's gonna get better. Yes, I will. Costa has landed the meaningful punches here in round one. Time. Quick kind of hook there. I told my wife we should spar. No, no, not, not good. It, it, it may, <laughs> may work for the Acostas, doesn't right. work for everybody. Right. What I do, is I, and I'll show her this story too, I just show her stories of, of boxing families and, and, and the wife and, and, and husband who get in the ring against one another. I'll get her in the ring one day. Continue to encourage our Twitch viewers to let their voice be heard. Chili Willie jumping in says Acosta doesn't skip leg day. Sean, you know a lot about that day. Chili Willie, no, he does not. He looks very strong, and anybody who's right there, you see him. He's twerking. He's 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 putting his legs and his hips into his punches. That's where the power is. And I know we we've seen guys at bigger weights. With, with a lot of power, you don't see them, you know, put the, the torque so much in their punches. But these smaller guys, you see a lot. The guys who have power, they're able to twist their hips and get the power from generated from the legs, as the coaster does. That's why you, if you see him miss a shot, it'll go the way that he threw the punch. He's, he's really putting a lot into it. Let's uh, check in with Current. Current. I'm in the blue corner here with Gilberto Mendoza's trainer, Andres Mendoza. Andres, what, do you, what does your fighter need to do to not get knocked out? Tito's knocked out 21 of his opponents in 21 wins. Keep sticking and moving. Keep working that jab. Got to keep working the jab. Circle out. What, what happened there with the, uh, the mouthpiece in round Circle out. one? Did he, did he go out there without the mouthpiece? Stop. Yeah, he Stop. did. Stop. That was my, that was my, my fault. <laughs> Tito has been undefeated in Puerto Rico. Obviously, you have a Mexican fighter here traveling. Uh, Use that jab. What, what, what can he do to, uh, to uh, avoid the home court advantage here? Uh, he's got to dominate every round. Um, keep, he's got to keep throwing more punches than what he's doing now, but we'll take it round by round. So far, are you happy with what you're seeing here? Yeah. Short hand. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> he said, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> Let me work. He's like, hey. Uh, <laughs> Let me work. Karen, I'm going to do this. But. Shades of Greg Popovich in the NBA right there. <laughs> Got to give Karen credit for giving it the old college try. I thought Karen was going to ask. Um, in the corner of Mendoza about the hairdo. You know what I'm saying? What, what product do you use? That's my first question. <laughs> Acosta pressing the action here in round number two. Curran, tell him you don't you don't need the you don't need any advice. You got it. <laughs> That's a very a lot of guys in the ring they need to touch you. Once they touch you they gain confidence. It doesn't matter that the punches didn't land flush. If I hit your shoulder, if I hit the, your forehead, your gloves, I know you're there and I can hit you. And that, that's what gives guys a lot of confidence. Again, as Brian pointed out earlier, as round number three gets underway, it's Acosta who has, you know, the world-class experience, having been a world champion, won the title at Madison Square Garden, defended it successfully several times. And he, and he looks like he's on a different level than Mendoza. You know, he's, he seems to be, to me, one, if not two steps ahead of Mendoza. He's able to make Mendoza miss and make him pay. And although this is Acosta's second straight fight at this weight division, he said if he wins this, he's going to move back down in weight. He'd love to fight WBO flyweight champion Junto Nakatani, a fight that was maybe supposed to take place before the quarantine mm. plans changed. He believes this fight could lift him back into it. The bo boxing is such a measuring stick in so many ways. And 
one measuring stick it, it could be for this acoustic kit is where am I now? Am I ready to move down and contend for that WBO or do I want to stay where I am and become a champion here at 115? He's fighting Mendoza, but I'm sure he's he's got a lot of questions that he's asking himself that, that'll be answered through this fight. Punch just missed. Good defense. Good defense by Acosta. Such a harsh puncher. You can see why he's got 21 knockouts and 21 victories. Yeah, he's strong. He, he has a strong frame, and then you can tell by the way he throws his punches that he throws with a lot of intention to hurt. Sean Acosta won his world title at 108. He fought at 112 last time. This time, more of a stay busy at 115. To the uninitiated, that would seem easy, right? Jump up and down and weight three pounds difference. But it seems the smaller you go, the much more that gap is between weight classes. That, that, that's the thing with boxing is you want every advantage possible. And for a lot of guys moving down and, and trying to fight what, 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 you, what they would consider smaller guys is as an advantage. So here now, just a, a catch weight for him to kind of get back in the ring. But I would, I expect him to move down. You see the power that he's got right here. He wants to try to carry that to a smaller weight and hurt those guys. Costa in control. End of round number three. Scheduled for eight. Time. Box. Round number four begins. No knockdowns in the fight. Acosta in the yellow has controlled this fight against Mendoza. You can really see Mendoza's caginess. Yeah, I'm sorry, excuse me, Acosta. Yeah, Mendoza boy. lands a nice left hook there, but Acosta moving away with the punch as it lands to really take off the, the full mm -hmm. level of that blow. The punch was a little low by Acosta. Box. A lot of faint from both guys. I mean, those are trying to impose himself. I like it. Good defense by Acosta, though, picking off those shots. Mm -hmm. And then the counter. He's got great timing with slipping and being able to counter. Got to keep the punches up, though. Some punchers just sound different. Yeah. I'm going to put a coast under that category. Even when it's just a jab or a little check hook, you can hear that. Yeah, you can. That's why I call it a thump. I just think that some guys punch differently. It sounds different. It sounds more like a thump. Twice. He's just missed with that right uppercut. It's, it's hard for me to ignore Mendoza. He's working very well. He's just, he's like a step behind Acosta. I know, like previously, I said he was two steps behind. He looks like he's just one step behind now. He's using good lateral movement, and he's using good combinations, too. He's also undaunted yeah. by everything Acosta is doing, even though it's working. Yeah, and he's, and he's trying to counter. Tempo! There was a little of that caginess you talked about from Mendoza. I think that's what I like most about Mendoza through this fight. He's able to get Acosta to follow him and turn him into some shots. Right there, he even <laughs> turned him and put him on uh, against the ropes and was going to take advantage, but it was a bad position. Uh, 
respect there for Mendoza to, to let it go. Round number five underway. Mendoza has the same name, of course, of WBA president Gilberto Mendoza Jr., no relation. But Sean, tell me if I'm wrong, Mendoza looks a lot like Jose Ramirez, the unbeaten, unified 140-pound uh. <laughs> champion, the Mexican-American. Same style, same haircut? Yeah, I think better hair, but they do look very familiar. And I thought I was the only one that saw that. So I'm sorry, I don't know why I thought that went past you. Nothing gets past me, all right? And <laughs> Nothing not gets past you. Good body shot there, and then a great right hand by him. <laughs> Mendoza ate a left inside after he got away from those big rights. Double hook, too. Thump, thump, thump. Costa acting like a destroyer. It's, I mean, this is the breakdown. This is the breakdown. And it's just thump, thump, thump. I want to know what was said in the corner because there's something different going on for Costa. And Sean, obviously, you was a two-time world champion, been in there against the best competition. You know, Acosta is, some of these punches are being blocked, but even when they're blocked, they pay dividends, yeah. don't they? That left hook to the body was not blocked. Vamos, it was vamos, vamos. very well, but it does. It, 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 I, like I said, this is the breakdown. Basically, when you break a fighter down, his arms can't resist the power that that it's uh, um, that it's it, that it's taking and like you said even with the punches that don't land flesh they're landing on the arms the shoulders the elbows some of them on the body some of them on the hips it breaks a guy down makes it hard for him he, he's not mobile as mobile anymore and, he's, and he can't function offensively anymore that's how you break a guy down and then eventually Body shot. Look straight, straight left to the body. A punch that really isn't supposed to hurt. It hurts coming from Acosta. Time and time again, I hear from fighters, Sean. They would much rather be hit upstairs than down in the basement. It's true. It's true. Body shot. They they catch your attention differently. Man, this is different. They also short circuit your uh, your your best intentions after being hit by one. Another really good round for Acosta. Time. What was that a little um Man. box? Well, like an Acosta flurry, we got a gust of wind here. You never know what you're going to get in an outdoor fight, Bob. You see the leaves floating around in the distance as well off the trees. <laughs> to see something this round from Mendoza. He's been plenty game. He's shown an incredible chin. He's not. He hasn't backed down on still trying to get inside, but can he do something differently to get a cost off his game? I'm not sure yet, John. And, and, and uh, treading forward a little more than he was in previous rounds, too. So, you know, kind of speaking on what I spoke on the previous fight, you got to do something different to get the result that you want. You can't come out the same way every round and expect to get a positive result. So Mendoza now, you know, trying to push forward a little bit, but... We need, we need offense, we need hands to move. Right. Let's check in with Kern. To Gilberto Mendoza's trainer in the blue corner. He said he wants 
more feints, more combinations, and the biggest thing he keeps yelling, get your head off the line. He feels like his head is right in Tito uh, Tito Costa's punching range. And if you remember, of course, Costa has 21 wins and 21 knockouts, so that's not where you want to be. They want more head movement. Back to you guys. Right there, Come, get off of the head combinations. Was, head was right there to get hit. There, there you go. Speaking of head movement, Bob, saw you over, uh, over, rocking over, out over. a little between Again. rounds to uh, Jefferson over. Starship. We built this city there. A little prom song for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prom <laughs> song. Shoot that over. Oh, man. Good shot, Brian. 80s? I'm not afraid to aim low. All right, let's put that out of there. <laughs> Shoot that jab to the body. Come over the top after. There you go. Get the head offline, and then you were able to counter. Mendoza's following the rules that his coach set for him. Rolling the but head. with that said, he's not doing enough to win the round. Yeah. yeah. Good right hand from Mendoza at the very least. He, he ate one in return, but yeah. this is what you're, you're going to have to, you're gonna have to punch with the coast to, to really make uh, uh, something change here. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the best round of the fight, and I think the best round for Mendoza as well. But would you get... So we begin... Seventh round scheduled for eight between Tito Acosta and Gilberto Mendoza. Costa has controlled this fight. No knockdowns in the fight. Costa has done a good job of working the body of Mendoza. Oh, nice double left, snapping back the head of Mendoza. We talk obviously a lot about Acosta's punching power. The numbers tell you in terms of the amount of knockouts, but let's not forget this is two divisions above what has been historically his best weight, where he was a former world champion at 108 pounds. Yeah. The body is different at this weight, and guys can absorb those blows a little differently than they can uh, uh, for him at a lower weight class. Brian, which speaks to this point of, you know, fighting at this weight, but really his chances of getting back to a world title are one weight below. It would seem that, and he's looking to sort of uh, find a home at 112 pounds, which is probably a more comfortable weight class for him to make. And you can certainly see by the way he fights, he's got power that will keep him very strong there. But I'm not even sure if I'm willing to say it's the weight difference that's affecting Acosta's power as much as Mendoza came to fight. He's shown a great chin, and he won't stop coming forward, even if his coach, rightfully so, wants him off that center line, try to come in at an angle. Yeah, and, and he's a good fighter. He knows how to roll off of the shots and take some of the, the impact off of the shots. He's able to roll off of Acosta's punches. See that? He, I mean, Acosta's coming with a good combination there, hooks and uppercuts. Gilberto is able to, to roll off of him. It's like playing tag with somebody you can't quite, you can't quite get them, you know? Look at that. It's, it's good boxing by Mendoza. He's losing the fight, but he's... Oh, left hand drops Mendoza. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. También fuera mal. Camine para acá. Costa is looking like I've been here before. Va, vea. I'm ready. Tiempo allá. Tranquilo allá. Box. Wow, that was a perfect left hand. Uh oh, oh no. Mendoza is hurt. Should step in and stop it. Yes, that was. Dose is on ice skate, team barely stand. That, that, that's how you survive, right there. I, that was impressive. Using his feet and and using his. Always listen to the way. 
So Mendoza survives the end of the seventh round. Let's see if Acosta can keep the pressure on and finish him off. It was interesting too because guys after the knockdown the, the referee gave the count then he checked on Mendoza and then Mendoza still didn't look like he was exactly cognizant of what was going on. Many referees would have stopped that as did referee Thomas Taylor when Acosta lost his world title, a similar situation. Hit by a big shot, didn't even get the count because he looked yeah. a little bit wobbly, the fight was over. Mendoza hasn't been stopped in nine years. It's just a, it's a, it's a thin line and you don't know. I, I, I felt like the, the ref was making the right decision. And then again, even speaking to it, I was impressed to see how he survived, but now you got a whole nother round, two minutes left of practically being in survival mode. But this is what box is all about. The hook. Acosta loves that hook. There it is again. Just powers his way in. Yep. No, come on here. It's good work by Mendoza. Mendoza, he's got good lateral movement left and right. He's able to make a custom walk into the shots. But this being an eight round fight as opposed to a 12 round championship fight, Acosta's been a very Ooh. active. Oh, a, a right hand there. Big right hand landing. That, did that upset him? Yeah, because then he hooked to the body and then a left to the head. Did that upset him? He said, what? You hit me? That Look. was a big right hand by Mendoza. He, wa he walked right into it, but then Acosta's like, no. Guido Acosta has dominated this fight, but tip your cap to Gilberto Mendoza because he brought it to Acosta the entire way. Yeah, he did. That was an impressive victory for Acosta and an impressive loss. It wasn't a losing effort. It was a, it was a, a winning effort by Mendoza. Yeah, he just got beat. He just got beat. The other guy's better. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah. But it's not like he didn't offer resistance and did, right until the very end he was trying to land his shots Bob's like you're trying to say it nice he just got beat <laughs> well if this was a trial for a world title fight like for a coach to back at 112 pounds which it probably will end up being wow did he pass with flying colors all right <laughs> Did you see that there was a it was an uppercut that landed in the armpit of Mendoza. You talk about breaking down a guy, getting getting close, getting up on him, hitting him everywhere he can be hit. And yet Mendoza never stopped. No. You ever been hit in the armpit? Yes. Yeah, I do. Ooh, I don't like it. And it's, you don't like getting hit at all. And it's well, you, <laughs> here's the thing: you get hit in the head. It's like, okay, that that was supposed to happen, but let me do this or that and make the adjustment. There's no adjustment for a punch to the to the underarm. It's like that. That's when you look at a guy, you just say that was uncalled for. <laughs> all right, let's send it up to Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, going eight rounds, all three judges turn in identical scorecards of 79 to 72. In favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision, Ankel.
Tito Acosta. So, Ana Acosta, a rare decision win. In fact, that's his first decision win. He was 21 and two with 21 knockouts, and he's actually won a decision. And he dominated the fight. There's no doubt about that. Nothing wrong with that. You got to get the win. Oh, scored a knockdown in the fight. Te queda con el cable y todo.